I recently received a small investment from Block Dojo. And if you guys don't know, that is a incubator for um, blockchain and AI sort of technology. Part of the agreement was that I had to come to London to be able to build out the MVP and then eventually present. The entire goal is basically to stress test the idea, build out the MVP, and then eventually present it to their um, extensive network of venture capitalists. If you guys don't know, venture capitalists are basically firms that deploy capital to new ideas and refined experiments and proof of concept sort of ideas and try to scale that up um, so they can get an exponential rate of return. I'll tell you a little bit about what happened in day one. So day one for me was a little bit crazy because I arrived in London and I arrived with no Wi-Fi and um, I, I still had Rwandian francs and I wasn't able, I thought for sure, you know, one of the biggest financial capital hubs in the entire world would be able to exchange Rwandan francs for, you know, British pounds. And I tried to do it when I was in the States and they didn't have Rwandan francs. They had Kenyan shillings, but they didn't have Rwandan francs. And I was doing it in New York, which is another financial hub. And they also, you weren't able to do it there too as well. So when I flew from New York to London, I thought, okay, for sure, I'm going to be able to um, exchange my we're on in francs for uh, British pounds. I wasn't able to. And then on top of that, I, I called the Airbnb host after I finally got Wi-Fi at the airport and we were arguing literally for 30 minutes because I didn't have the address and it was my first time using Airbnb. I usually use booking.com because I never do long-term stays and I'm going to be in London anywhere from three to six months. I'm not entirely sure yet how long this process is going to take. But yeah, so I finished then talking with the airbnb host after arguing with him for 30 minutes he finally gave me the address because he thought oh well this guy is basically trying to do something a little bit sketchy because like why does he not know that airbnb sends the address anyways i was able to get the address from airbnb but he also sent the address too as well and then i was on my way so i had to basically screenshot navigate through london basically virtually with no with no data and it was my first time so um, I finally get close to where the Airbnb location is and I ask the guy, I'm like, hey, uh, am I close to um, the my Airbnb, right? And he's like, yeah, yeah, you're, you're definitely close. And I was like, okay, um, can I use your phone so I can call the Airbnb lady? And he looks me up and down like this, turns to the side and he's like, no, bruv. And then he just immediately goes into his house, which... It's not even his house. He just lives in one of the rooms more than likely because it's so expensive here for just one room within an entire uh, house. You're going to end up paying anywhere from like $1,500 to $2,000 for just one room. Um, ridiculously expensive. And I, I just don't understand how people live here. And also when I was walking on my way, people are just so gloomy. They just look sad. Like everybody looks sad. You just feel that the weather sucks, so there's not enough vitamin D, nobody's smiling, people coming to and from work because they gotta work so much because they gotta pay $2,000 for one room. It's just really nuts to me, but that's just how it is here. And um, yeah, I, I don't know why anyone would live here. For In my opinion, I think Lagos, um, Nigeria, uh, Paris, and France, I would also say New York and London are probably the four locations you just go to strictly for business, but you don't actually go there to actually live. Like this is not a place that I would like come here to live. This was never on my bucket list to come to London um, to live to live in England. Um, same as I, I don't want to live in the United States. You know, it's not it's not a, on my bucket list. Even though I grew up in the U.S., but it wasn't like oh like this. I never saw the U.S. as that kind of place where you live. It's just a place you go to make money, make a, make a bunch of money, and then you spend it elsewhere. You do deal arbitrage or you do uh, remote work, right? So to leverage the dollar in other locations where, you know, you can, you can spend your dollars and at a cheaper rate. Let me tell you how I got to the location. So I'm literally just standing there and then I don't know where the lady comes and um, she's looking at me. I'm looking at her and I'm like, Sophia for Airbnb. And she's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, Okay, so I wave my hand and then um, I, I finally uh, walk up to her and then she invites me inside and I told her, hey, I need Wi-Fi like now because I have a meeting with the shareholders and I, I want to meet the entire team at Blog Dojo. 
and everybody. Um, I didn't know exactly what to expect, to be honest with you completely. And uh, cause I've never done an incubation type of style program. She takes a sweet time to finally get the Wi-Fi and the password for the Wi-Fi. And she brings her husband too as well. And then they, they have like a literally a master thesis worth of things, what not to do with the Airbnb. Like it's obvious stuff, like make sure you have good hygiene and clean. And yeah, one thing that stuck out to me was the fact that I could not bring um, guest overnight. And I was like, what the, what, why? I've never ever, this is the first time ever that I've booked somewhere ever in my life. I've been to, this. England is the 17th country now that I've been to. And this is the first time that I've booked any kind of uh, booking and I couldn't bring guests overnight. And it was weird because my girlfriend was supposed to be coming in the next couple of weeks. And yeah, so I'm just, uh, I was a little bit flabbergasted with that. And then um, he then told me like, oh, you, you can bring her, but you're gonna have to pay extra. And I was like, bro, I'm not paying extra. Um, it's already super expensive for this room. And I don't wanna waste company funds on that. By the way, guys, I haven't slept, right? That's another thing too, as well. I was on a flight in, in, in New York, right? to London, they didn't offer any food. And I flew at 1800 to 6 p.m., right? And I got to London around six is when I got to London, right? So I hadn't slept the entire time on, on the flight. So I'm literally gassed, right? I'm gassed and I'm annoyed and I wanna go to sleep. And I just wanted to take a quick nap before the meeting because I literally had like an hour and 30 minutes or so. I think by the time I arrived to Airbnb, it was like 8.30 and the meeting was at like 10. And then we were gonna meet with the whole entire Black Dojo staff, introduce ourselves, et cetera. And I thought we were supposed to do it virtually, which they said in the WhatsApp group that it was supposed to be virtually, then they changed it last minute, but I didn't have any Wi-Fi, so I couldn't see. And um, yeah, basically um, by the time I saw that they wanted us to be actually at the office for the first day, it was a little bit too late. So anyways, not to jump around, but this guy just reads me off the list of two, three pages worth of stuff. That I'm like, dude, I know how to read and I'm tired. And he just kept, he's one of those people that takes 35 minutes to explain a 30 second sort of um, statement, right? And I was like, dude, I, I understand how to read. You know, I can read on my own and you just show me around the place, show me all the stuff. He took literally like the entire time that I could have been sleeping, like almost an hour and a half to two hours with the time I could have been sleeping just to describe like very simple stuff, you know, like turn the lights off, turn the water off, like very simple stuff that everybody should know to do if you have a decent level of human humanity, right? Anyways, they finally leave and I finally get into the meeting and yeah, it's just, I'm super, super dead tired. So like we do like an hour, hour and a half or whatever and everyone's introducing themselves. And then after that, um, we I think they had a break then after the break, like uh, they got back, we got back on. And then after that, I, I just literally fell asleep because I was just so tired. I was so jet lagged. I hadn't eaten in like almost 24 hours and I fell asleep. And uh, that's basically how my first day went. It was literally nuts. The second day, what we learned was lean startup principles, right? So basically what that means is to move fast and break things, right? And, get, and reciprocate feedback quicker so you can develop quicker and you can have a speed advantage on your competitor, right? And that's basically how that works. So basically we, we learned these principles um, and then, um, yeah, we basically broke that down the entire day. And that was basically how the second day went from what I can remember. My, my memory's kind of fuzzy. I was planning on doing these video logs every single day, but I got too busy because um, I also run another blockchain consulting firm too as well. And it takes up a lot of my time. And then I also shoot content too. Basically in the beginning stage, when I was presenting my project to Block Dojo, they thought it was a great idea. And the idea was called readable. And it was basically, you were going to be able to tokenize eBooks and be able to trade them on chain in the marketplace. The problem was that somebody already kind of did a raise for eBooks in a earlier cohort that they had for the incubation program too as well. And they raised $2 million. So I was slower, right? Which again, brings you back to speed and why you need to be really, really fast and faster than your opponent. What I ended up doing then is switching it out into listenable, right? And they liked this idea more because it was basically being able to tokenize podcast and audio books, trade them on an NFT marketplace at the same time as well, being able to leverage language learning modules to streamline and transcribe data and into eBooks and newsletters so people can repurpose the content into new 
audience be it building or uh, monetization vehicles, right? A3, we did ecosystem mapping, right? So basically what that entailed is being able to break down your, all your elements of your business and every single person that your business touches from partners to customers to technological back-end sort of cloud-based services like Amazon Web Services and et cetera. So basically anybody that you're paying or someone's paying you or you're partnering with and exchanging some sort of value. And so with the ecosystem mapping, we also had to kind of switch with, because it was it's, it's basically a total of 10 founders, right, that they invested in, right? And we switched basically, or you partnered up with a founder and the founder get to dissect your idea and your map, right? And one founder pointed out that he thought that other people were doing my idea. So then um, I got a little bit freaked out, but I came prepared because I had another idea and they're okay with the hard pivot in this program. What I ended up doing was going back doing research and realizing that nobody actually had the idea that I thought that he said that they had, but people, there was one that was in earlier stages trying to develop this sort of implementation, right? And um, long story short, I started thinking maybe I should just do a hard pivot into my other project. This is when I was a little bit talking then with um, the director and telling him like, hey, look, I think we're gonna do a hard pivot and we're gonna move into Fast Track. Basically, this is another project that I've been working closely with with my uh, best friend, Tan. It's a B2B blockchain solution for documentation and storage. This is the one that I think is going to be way bigger because we just partnered with one of the biggest logistics companies in Romania in Elvada and we're already about to get the customs license. Like we were just farther ahead with this project. So I thought maybe just hard pivot instead of splitting energies and focus just on this. And yeah, so they liked the idea too as well. And they talk, and I talked with basically uh, a couple other of the people who were part of the Black Dojo team. And they basically said that they were on board with it too as well with and being okay with the hard pivot. And that's basically where I was at um, currently but they did tell me to think about it over the weekend if I really wanted to do a hard pivot, if I really wanted to build listenable from the ideal stage all the way up where I wanna basically run with something that's already been tested, already has a product market fit, already has potentially soon to be paying clients and move forward then to the next sort of stage within the incubation. For this day, so, we basically had a, like a welcome day where we all got to present ourselves to the all the different founders to showcase who we are and what we're about and what makes us tick. And so that was basically it for the beginning days, just basically everybody got to, not just the, all the founders, but also everybody from the Block Dojo team too as well, got to basically present themselves and who they are, what makes them tick. And um, so we can get each to know each other better. So it's easier to communicate. We, f we feel more comfortable around each other. So it was really great beginning stage of the day. Then we ended up going to a museum too as well and just showcasing like where the, you know, the office building is and what's around it and showing that the Olympics was used to be there too as well. We saw like stadiums and et cetera. I got to see just a little bit of the city too as well and just basically more of a relaxed day um, as part of the incubation program. So day five is basically you don't go to the office, you basically grind and work on your own. So this day um, I was basically working out the kinks with Fast Track because I actually wasn't the CEO, but now after talking with Christian who was the former CEO, I told him like, hey, I think it makes more sense for us to switch titles because then it's just easier to presented to the VCs and um, yeah, so we, we ended up doing that. So I'm now the CEO of Fast Track. If, if before I was a board of directors member, but I now am the CEO. And so we're now gonna work out contractually how these things are gonna work. We'll probably structure in Britain and then we'll have a subsidiary in Bulgaria, which is basically where my other company is structured for blockchain consulting in Moonboy Capital Ventures. We're gonna go from there. So that's basically what I did on, on Friday and, and um, Saturday and the weekend and also shot content, film content, edited content, and at the same time trying to get more clientele for Fast Track and also um, inform the Black Dojo team of how we're gonna be moving forward for the next week. So I'm excited for the next week and I hope you guys stay tuned on this journey that I'm on. You know, I wanna be documenting every single week just to showcase to you guys basically how it is to be able to build these types of projects and these types of things um, from scratch 
and uh, bring them to life and then bring them to the actual marketplace for people to actually become paying clients. And yeah, so you can start cash flowing. If you guys enjoyed this video and if you're listening to this on Spotify, I hope you enjoy it too as well. Stay tuned for the next one and peace.